What's up guys? You know, we gotta quit meeting like this. But once again, I'm packing up the boat. It is an absolutely beautiful day in St. Augustine. And I'm gonna be honest, I've got like three videos that I need to finish editing. And I've got a bunch of other stuff to do because we are gonna go up to the hunt camp in South Carolina this weekend, do a bit of a, a work day, as well as some small game hunting. It might be some hogs, might be some coyotes, might be some squirrels, I don't know yet. But it's too nice. I'm gonna head out, I'm gonna try to get some fish, and I'll have a fish fry for the guys up there. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, we got a cast net, throw that in the boat couple of lightweight rods um, and I'm just gonna go out on a meat trip get a cooler and we'll see you out there all right we're headed out salt run in my haste leaving the house I forgot my sunglasses luckily I got a hat but uh the wind is pretty light and out of the west I'm headed to the near shore numbers probably gonna hit some uh, some public numbers I've got a live well with like three dozen shrimp in it and my goal is to put some meat in the boat so we can have a fish fry at camp this weekend for all the guys Let's see how it goes wish me luck so beautiful day to run the beach beautiful today almost a slicker you don't get many days in February like this so when you do make sure you take advantage of them all right y'all got a live shrimp here what I like to do is pinch a little bit of their tail off like that and then I take them using a little 2-0 circle hook put that right behind the head don't go through that black little bit and we're gonna drop it down for y'all uh, I found the fish I'm confident we're gonna get a bite here pretty quick let me show you how it works we're in uh, 46 feet of water almost 50 feet of water here but the beach is right there we're only about I don't know two miles off the beach mile and a half all right so I just hit bottom I'm gonna bring it up a couple of cranks and immediately I'm getting hit no missed that one let him eat it Nope. They got almost all my shrimp. I just got a head left. Let's see if I catch one on a head. Thing is, and what I was going to show you guys, is I found the fish I'm looking for. Weak fish and yellowmouth trout. But they're smaller than what I want. Uh, so I might try a different number here. Try to get one on cam for you guys. Okay, I just hit bottom. Bring it up a couple of cranks. Immediately I got taps. Oh. There he is on the old shrimp head. And this is actually Oh, it's a bluefish little baby bluefish. It's not the fish. I was trying to show you guys, but unfortunately These little blues are too small 
they got to be 12 inches in the state of Florida. So we'll put him back. Oh man, he's going to slime my console. Y'all haven't noticed I drop stuff a lot. Anyways, we're going to go, maybe we'll move here. Let's see. So I got a little bit better of a weak fish. These are in the drum family. If you've never seen them before, they almost look like a spotted sea trout, but they're not. They're kind of got a checkered uh, pattern on them. They do have little teeth uh, and they don't have regulations in the state of Florida. They're unregulated. So there's no minimum size and uh, you can catch 100 pounds a day. This one's just close enough to fish fry size. So I'm gonna throw him in the release well. Maybe we'll get some bigger ones, maybe we won't. Keep moving here. All right, y'all, this is what we're after right here. Weak fish in, well, you know what? This one is a yellow mouth trout. So they're related, but uh, cousins. You can see that one doesn't have the checkered pattern. And of course it has yellow in the mouth. <coughs> this fish is about 12 inches. Um, they do get way bigger, but if I can get a cooler full of these, we're gonna have a big old fish fry. And that is my goal today. So I lost my hat, had it on backwards running and my live well lid flopped open. I turned around to look at it whoop, and I couldn't find it. it. Sunk, sucks. I just got that one from Toadfish. This spot is quite a bit shallower. I'll tell you guys where it is. It's called the Pier Barge. I feel confident telling you that because everybody in town knows about the Pier Barge and it's a public number. Uh, it's about, 30 foot of water maybe a little bit more so shallower than the last spot and quite a bit more structure at this one I'm using a jig head now it's actually a sheep's head jig head just grabbed it out of the boat what I do I come down through the top of the shrimp spin them around and then come back out through the top so he's like that I'm gonna drop it straight down I'm right over the structure I was marking a good amount of fish. Current's moving pretty good. A little bump. Something down there. There we go. Ah, little blues again. We've got a better fish here. See folks, that's what we're looking for right there. That's a good sized weak fish. No, that's a yellow mouth, I'm sorry. Man, I was wasting my time down at that other spot. Hopefully we can get into these, I got about two dozen shrimp left. If I catch a dozen of these, I'll have enough for the fish fry. There he is. Yeah. This is going to be a much better fish. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about, folks. This is what I came out here to do. This is a weak fish. So that other one, was a yellow mouth. This one's a weak fish. They taste pretty similar. I'm gonna turn the camera off. Keep fishing. Oh, I got a big one. Look at that. That's a nice one. So we're starting to find some better fish here. I've been steady putting them in the box. I'm squinting in the sun. No hat, no glasses, but get ready to call it a day. I did pretty good. Got quite a few fish in the well. And I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm gonna ice these things down real good before I leave. All right, guys, well, 
I ended up with 22 fish. I think that'll be enough for our fish fry. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Um, these trout, uh, you have the yellow mouth and the weak fish, um, are known to be a little mushy. They're definitely not you know, necessarily considered the best fish in the world to eat, but they're very good. So what I got is two bags of ice in here. And then I'm gonna put enough of this seawater to make a slush. So I'm making a slush in there, just like this. I'll guys check it out. Nice slush. And that salted ice will get colder than just ice alone. And what it's gonna do is firm these fish up. It's starting to get a little rough out here, but we got some good ones in the those are all eaten. So here we go. That is not a bad day, folks. Plenty of good fish. It's about 50-50 weak fish and yellow mouth trout. And I'm just gonna push them down in that ice. We have a proverbial pile of fish. Um, I think we ended with 22, or I ended with 22. I had a ton of fun. There are two kinds of fish here. This is a weak fish and this is a sand trout. We call them yellow mouth trout. Uh, I think people north of here call them winter trout, um, but neither of them have regulations. You can catch 100 pounds a day uh, and they taste the same. Uh, they're great fried. They're not, you know, they ain't redfish, but they're pretty good if you're gonna have a big fish fry like what I'm planning. And uh, I brined them in an ice slush overnight. Uh, They've been known to be a little bit mushy, kind of like a sea trout. Uh, they're definitely related, but I've got my toadfish stowaway fillet knife here, and I got some cleaning to do, but I'll show you guys just real quick. They're very soft, but putting them in that brine overnight really firmed the flesh up, just like any fish down the back there. Then using the tip of my finger to feel the bones Come down, just working over those bones, back down and out, up over the pin bones. These knives are super sharp. I uh, got them and I mean, I honestly don't have a flay knife this sharp right now, but uh, take that flay off and grab it. Get your finger on there. Very slippery. Get your finger on there and take that skin off. Because this knife is so sharp, I can't push down like how I push down on a redfish uh, skin, but I'm gonna work through these and we're gonna have a big old fish fry at camp. Next time you see us, we'll be in South Carolina. velvet buck that I killed back in August so I killed I killed my buck for the season literally the second time I sat down to hunt I was up here in August and I'd actually came up to put out some cameras and just kind of scout a little bit make sure there wasn't a raccoon living in the camper and <laughs> no just a mouse we had like there was a mouse I got him too I should have made a video on it but uh you know, we had like a cool front. So it was like surprisingly not hot in August for two days. And uh, I sat two times and I had a bachelor group of bucks come out and I shot a big old nine point. He would have been a 10 point, but he's, one of his tines was broken off, which was weird because he was in velvet. But uh, we're gonna go pick him up right now from Three Mile Creek Taxidermy in Earhart, South Carolina. I'm stoked on it. Check these things out, B. Oh, look at the kitty. Come on, kitty. Come on. Got a big one in the freezer. It's up there. And I, I 
Here is my velvet buck. Um, Mr. Jeremy at Three Mile Creek Taxidermy did it for me. Super happy. Uh, it's in Earhart, South Carolina. And uh, if you guys got a deer or you're in the area, definitely uh, bring it over here for him. Another cool thing he can do is he can do a velvet Euro, which I didn't even know was possible. But if you had a uh, a, a velvet buck and you didn't want to go all the way with the shoulder mount you can do a euro and still keep that velvet um but he does a really good job everybody in my camp takes their deers here and uh especially with that thin summer coat he knocked it out of the park it's so red yeah they're different they you know they change for when it gets cold it's but, basically as soon as that velvet drops mm -hmm. yeah their tides will change color yeah it's cool. You know, I said that I would <laughs> hunt a velvet buck again after this one, but I don't. I think I, I, think I lied. I'll try again this year. <laughs> it's so soft. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. You're very welcome. I got kicked out of the co captain seat. I have to ride in the back with these fools. <laughs> Hi. Because, uh,. My seat got taken. Hi. That's my, that's my new shotgun rider. I see that. You see where he's missing, but look at this detail. If you look really close, there is literally still a tick on that velvet. <laughs> I don't know if y'all could see that or not, but uh, I'm gonna take it back to camp. What's up, y'all? So we're at my hunt camp in South Carolina. Uh, we came up here to camp for the weekend and relax and cook and eat. Uh, doing a little bit of a work weekend, fixing things. Although, I haven't actually really fixed anything. But <laughs> we haven't done any work. Other than Crystal says we need a new camper and we shouldn't fix anything. But <sighs> I'm prepping this fish to fry. We ended up, we had like a half a bag of those uh, yellow mouth trout and we fish. But what I do, you guys have seen me do this before, is, oh, I already threw it away, but I squeeze the juice from a whole lemon. I know this is a lime, but I use the lemon <laughs> onto the fish. And then I'm using house archery fish fry mm -hmm. and just working through it in batches. I like to go ahead and bread all my fish before I, before I fry it. So I'll put a handful in there, not too much get too much your fish fry will get clumpy on you shake it up in the bag like so it's shaking bake I helped like that and then uh, when we're camping I love these disposable aluminum foil pans man it makes life real easy uh, we don't really have the means to do a whole lot of dishes out here and stuff if we had a new camper we would well, yeah, remember she said right that now, she still wouldn't do the dishes. That's not true because uh -huh. I just did the dishes right over there yeah. at this thing. Watch out, dog! And uh, it was cold water because the faucet is broken uh -huh. in our camper, so I can't do the dishes. In but the show camper. them this. I'm super stoked on this. We were on our way up and we stopped at Bucky's of all places. I've wanted one of these things and uh, got me a little cast iron set. <laughs> Look at this. But wait, oh. where's your apron? Um, I ain't put it on yet. <laughs> They'll see that. We got shrimp boiling. Mm. You see it? Those are gonna be good. We're gonna be frying fish here. And we got some oysters. You guys gonna meet the crew here in a second too. They are uh, characters. But uh, we'll see you in just a second. Speaking of characters. <laughs> yeah. There's one of them over there, <laughs> burning marshmallows. You know you're a little kid, you like to burn marshmallows more than you like to eat them. I know I did. <laughs> so, we're frying up some fish here. I got, what I say, it was 22 of them trout, and uh, hopefully it's enough for everybody. But, uh, I think it's gonna be plenty. Yeah, got my new cast iron here, I love this thing. But we gotta talk about something there your apron so crystal said <laughs> in bucky's she looks at me and she's like 
if I if I buy this, will you wear it? And I said, sure. But you know who paid for it when we got up to the counter? Me. Well, only half of it's true. So what did you want from me? Well, well. <laughs> we got shrimp. Yeah, we got shrimp. I dipped them shrimp in Oak Hill the other day. And then we got a bushel of salt run oysters. Not gonna lie. I did buy those oysters. I didn't have time to go get any. Um, Watch out, I bought Marlin. them at Mr. Price's before we left town. But uh, we're about about to eat. Or well, we're about to have a cookout, I, should I say? Um, beard's all fluffy. Been <laughs> camping for two nights. Mhm. Mm we're gonna hot. Hey, this guy, what he's got? Shrimp, fat shrimp. I tell you what, man. This is better than being at home. We've had some good meals here at this place. Mm -hmm. Man, this better than being at home. Uh, I ran the food, I ain't Salt water, fat <laughs> fish. You know what you gotta do next time, Ian? Find shoemakers. Get some, get some uh, fresh mullet you and bring it up it? here and fry it. Oh, yeah. you. A lot of people were asking <laughs> I love you when so I much. mullet. <laughs> There's nothing better than fresh fried fried mold, I think. I work with I work, watching uh, play it in. I work with this old stripper dude. You fill it all the way up, you fill it like that. No, I don't fill it all the way up. Like that many? Is that too many? Well, I don't know if you sit in the water. I, it don't matter, that's plenty, man. That's good. So halfway? Yeah, that's true. I used to throw a little old bay. But you do it how you want to. Well, I don't care. Just you the flavor. No, you your pot, you know how to do it. You do it how you always do. This it. young show. Want the old bay or no? We want the old bay. Jeff, put the old bay. Do it your way. You ain't <laughs> gonna get Jeff him my way. You're not gonna get him my Don't way. Don't you see his name is written on his? Uh, I've had his oysters way. before, and they're better than mine. So. They're putting the oysters up there. I got to have mm -hmm. it. Don't know the animal. Look. Yeah. Right on tailgate. That's the best way to have them. Mm -hmm. Woo! They're hot. Shiny look. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. What? Not too hot. Oh yeah. Try some. Got some fish. Mm -hmm. All right, so everybody's here. We eating. We got shrimp. We got Dead fried jacked. fish. <laughs> We're gonna grill, <laughs> they're gonna grill some back strap. We got oysters on the grill. We got boiled shrimp, fried fish. But I'm gonna cut the camera off, enjoy myself. We're gonna uh, call it a day for this one. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.